this is this is but like this is this is really it, right? You have URLs, you've got users, you tag your bookmarks. The one thing that I really like in Bookie is that when you click this little eyeball, um, that B readability library, it takes this URL. So let's go look at what the web page. This is what the page looked like, right? Yay, very readable. I have to scroll through and find where the hell the text is at. Um, and it actually like pulls it in and tries to blurb out the you know find the text, the content, and stuff. And so like here's an HTML5 imports page, right? So you know this might be a little bit easier to read um, than this, although this isn't bad. But um, in general use, you'd be browsing the web and you see an interesting web page. Yeah. So like so this is how I, this, is, that, yeah. this is how I test whether stuff's working, okay. right? <laughs> so I go to like news google.com, I click on one of the first articles, and I go okay, and then I go click on my extension. Well, this is one of the really cool features that Google Summer of Code Student recently added. We now parse the title and the URL of the page to suggest tags oh, for wow. you to use oh, nice. based on the page you're on, right? So like, cool. I don't know what this is about, but I think Europe and, Kurt, uh, and Turkey and Accident sounds, oh, and Cole probably sounds really good. So now I'll bookmark it. So this would be instead of putting it in the Instead of putting it in my browser bookmarks, right? Because what's nice now, is I can go to Firefox and go find the same thing, right? So now if I go to Bookie, I'll see I've got this bookmark and it's been tagged with these tags mm -hmm. and I can actually, this is what it pulled out as like the readable content, which doesn't always work great on really crazy articles. <laughs> um, and then if I search for Turkey, it pops up, right, <coughs> as a result. Uh, and then we have an issue where I'm having a problem scaling out a full text search engine in Woosh. Um, in theory, I'm supposed to be able to do this. Uh, well, not even Turkey. So what was it? It was coal. It was CNN. So let's look for CNN, I guess. A word I did not tag. Right. And it didn't work. So of course not. Because I wouldn't want it to. Um, so, I mean, that's I mean that's the nuts and bolts of it, right? Is, is I can go to my, you know, that's not where I wanted to go. I where is the data stored? So the data for this is stored in a Postgres database on, on Instance I run on EC2. It's supported to run in SQLite, MySQL, though someone pointed out there's a bug in the data migration script for MySQL I have to fix in Postgres. So um, the data is, in this case, is stored on my server, uh, my EC2 instance running or whatever. So, so if somebody else starts to run Bookie or Bookmark, they're, yep. they're going to store it on your server? You're storing the data? No, no, no. That's what I mean. Like, if you set up your own instance, it's yours. It's like running WordPress. You can run WordPress locally, or you go to vmark.us and you can run, you can not bother with it and, and use your bookmarks here. Hmm. Right? And this is what I mean by a lot of users don't want to install and run WordPress locally. But they want to use WordPress for a blog. You know, and that's kind of what I had to do to get. And so this is, you know, it's, it's, this isn't huge. I got a little dashboard down here. Um, so, you know, right now there's 410 users with bookmarks on bmark.us. Uh, they've got 100 and almost 22,000 bookmarks in the system, uh, of which about 114,000 are unique. So there's an overlap, you know, people have duplicated bookmarks. And you now. gladly share that with uh, the NSA so they don't have to look <laughs> I, I don't have to, it's right? They just automatically find their, I will say. <laughs> they're, they're, they're your backup for it. <laughs> <laughs> this runs on 1004 servers. And so it was kind of funny because there was the big, you know, I do pay, I pay for the servers to run this on, I pay for an SSL search so that your logins are encrypted. Um, I do try to, I mean, I spend money to make this a decent experience for users. Um, but what was funny was that the, uh, the SSL hack came out and I was on so old a version of a uh, SSL library that I wasn't affected. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> me! <laughs> because what I don't need to do is spend my time worrying about these things. Um, so. Um, and then, so then there's the flip side of this is uh, so that B readability library is interesting. I actually use it just like as a read little bookmarklet, and this will send it over to r.bmark.us. So you ever find a website where they use a horrible small tiny font that you can't actually read? <laughs> I click the button in my browser and I read it. <laughs> and what's great is like this is stored in back in Redis. So if I shit now, I read this article. I'm like, hey guys, this is really cool. So I go into IRC and I paste it. So if I go, uh, go open a new private window, um, notice it loads up instantly because I've cached the parsed results. I didn't have to go refetch the page and stuff. So this is what I kind of mean by like a suite of tools that have come out of you know things. And then if I run Firefox, um, 
which I haven't run recently, so it's gonna, you know, I've got my, I've got my bookie extension in Firefox too. You know, and this stuff just, I mean, this is spare time, right? No one's, no one's giving me money to work on bookie. I don't, I don't charge, I don't have any users paying fees. I don't have any kind <coughs> angel investor donations. So this is all spare time stuff, but I feel like without Bookie, I would not be as good a developer as I think I am, right? Like, it's, this has helped hone my skills and has not relied on work to send me to a training seminar or whatnot. Like, you know, these days it's on you. And open source software, running a project, be getting involved, don't run it. Go find a project you use and love and find bugs and contribute. Like, we love it as an open source, you know, developer, you know. Um, question? Yeah, that's when you said that the post is on an EC2 uh, instance yeah. and that you get for your research. How big are your costs for your money? So, I, for a while I ran reserved instances. I just said, you know what, I need two. I run the database and I use a, a background processing worker that run, uses Redis, they run on one server, and then the web front ends and the workers are on the other end. <coughs> so, and for a while it was around 60 bucks a month or whatever. I think it's up to about 100 now. Um, Rackspace has kindly donated an account um, for us to use um, because we're open source. So, like our CI system is running um, that runs the tests and stuff for every commit and landing. Um, it's hosted by Rackspace, who very kindly has given us an account. I've thought about moving the actual running instances over. Um, I've just not gotten around and messed with it yet. Um, again, that's like. The pain point of this, right, is like migrating the server, resetting it up, and all that stuff on the one hand will help me get better at those kind of tasks about migrating running applications and, you know, putting things on pause so that I can have time to move the database and whatnot. But it's time I'm not working on bugs in Bookie or working with the Google Summer of Code students and, you know, so it's, there's a big chunk of like, if it ain't broke, <laughs> if it ain't broke yet, uh, don't fix it. So. But yeah, I mean, I really, I probably drop about 100 bucks a month on Bookie, which I consider like a hobby, you know, and could I drop 100 bucks a month on bowling or something if I was a bowling aficionado? Sure, golf, sure. Whatever. Yeah. golf. Sure. so on the one hand, I don't consider it that bad, but I know everyone thinks it's an open source, it's free, it's free, it's free, like no, it's expensive as hell, by the time you count the hours and, you know, trying to make this stuff pleasing place to come and work and hack, um, it's expensive. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so you can run it two ways. Which the bookmarks would be stored on your local device, or we can take advantage of your server. Exactly, right? So we have to install the service on your own server. Right. <laughs> so, you know, this is my develop instance. I can run, I'm going to cheat and just make running. Oh, no. Maybe not. <laughs> Why is that not there? Make files are awesome. We should do more of those. Um, this is going to take a second. Ryan's going to get mad at me in a minute. Uh, anyway, um, geez, where did that go? <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, call a make command that makes it. You know, so, oh, I don't have a database. Um, Anyways, the, the, what I'm trying to prove here is like, you can get clone the code, you can run it, and everything's on your system. You own it. You can put it on SQLite, run it locally. You could set up Postgres and run it with Postgres like I do on your own company server. If you wanted to have a company shared bookmark app, this is there. It's free to use. Have at it. More fun, you know. So, so then you have the browser plugin. Can you point that browser plugin? Yep. So system? yeah. So it's annoying on the one hand. Most users get cranky because they're like, I don't understand. But, you know, in the configuration of the extensions, you tell it what's the URL to your bookie instance, what's your username there, and what's your API key that the site will give you. Um, which is why people are interested about this in Debian, right? They could app get install bookie and then have it running and then go and, you know, change the user or whatever, point their extension at it. Then this kind of fits in this whole own your own data world of, um, you know, run your own bookmarks. You, you know, there's a lot of people that there's a lot of companies that are delicious. There's Clips, there's Pinboard um, that you can you know pay or ads or whatever to to do this stuff. But um, or go your own path, right? That's pretty cool. Yeah, really good. So, any other questions? Or any 
any yeah. idea how many people are um, using this? So there's 700 million people using the. See how many are subscribed to yours, but there's people that have. Yeah, so, so there's, there's, there's 410 have bookmarks. I, I don't track how often they go. Uh, one thing I do have is I run analytics, or no, I can look at things like. Um, So I can look at like analytics of like how many people there's 49 people using the F Firefox extension. There's um, go away. I don't know. There's you know 100 or so that use the Chrome extension. Maybe um, you know I do run Google Analytics on the bookmark site, but uh, because <laughs> the way the front end works is this is all JavaScript. Like if you turn off, if you go disable JavaScript. Disable JavaScript and reload the page. Oh. <laughs> it's not not there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's because the front end is all JavaScript and it talks to Bookie's API. And I did this because I wanted to make sure that I consumed my own API so that if the API broke or sucked, I would feel the pain before users of the API would. Right. So um, it was an interesting experiment. Right. Like I wanted to just try out an all JavaScript front end app, and I wanted to try out using APIs and stuff. And so. I own the app, right? So I can do whatever the heck I want. I did this. Uh, some people come down complain. They're like, hey, there's no good reason why you couldn't just dump out the template, you know, like loop through in a template and give me all the HTML. I'm like, yeah, you're right. There's not. Accepting um, <laughs> patches. <laughs> well, not even that, though, right? Because I don't want to do that. Because I, I want to use the API, right? And maybe I have enough API consumers where that's not as big a deal anymore. But, you know, um, everything you can do to make sure that you catch the breakpoints before a user does is a good thing because. If you feel it and fix it, then that's a p another potential person who might contribute who didn't get turned away because it didn't work out of the box, right? Any other questions? Yeah, code quality. Yeah. How do you guys manage code quality on projects like that? So, <laughs> I mean, because you got to look at a bunch of crap code coming in. From it, it's the it's right? the Rick barometer of the page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and I will say, um, so I you know back in.